Have you ever wondered, what happens when you take a breath? How does oxygen reach your blood? And what if I told you there's a hidden gateway, that decides whether air goes to your lungs or food goes to your stomach? Get ready to explore the fascinating journey of every breath you take. Air has two entry points, your nose and mouth. But which one is better? Your nose is like a superhero filter. It traps dust and warms the air before sending it down. Your mouth, on the other hand, lets in more air quickly but skips the filtering process. Now, let's follow the air as it takes its next important turn. Meet the epiglottis, the ultimate traffic controller. This tiny flap will close the mouth of trachea when food particles comes in. Make sure that food goes to your stomach. And air goes to your lungs. Imagine what would happen if it failed. Thankfully, the epiglottis is always on duty, making sure air flows smoothly into the next passage, your trachea. This is your trachea, also called the windpipe, a superhighway for air. This is the main passageway for air from our throat to lungs. Trachea is about 10 to 12 centimeters long. Roughly the length of an adult's hand, and 2 centimeters wide. Trachea have a gate and a gatekeeper in front of it. In the beginning of trachea there are, two pearly white bands of tissue in the center of your voice box, it is called vocal cord. It opens and allow air flow in and out through trachea. There is also a leaf-like flexible flap called epiglottis, positioned above the trachea, that act as a gatekeeper. When food or water comes in, epiglottis closes the opening of trachea. And when air comes in or out, Epiglottis opens the mouth of trachea, and allows the smooth airflow through the trachea. This trachea have a unique feature. These C-shaped rings of cartilage. They keep the trachea open at all times, like flexible scaffolding. And that open part at the back of the trachea is soft, so your esophagus can expand when you swallow food. Now, follow the air as it reaches a fork in the road, the bronchi. At the bottom of the trachea, the path splits into two, the right and left bronchi. These are the first branches of your airway tree. These bronchi are also covered with rings of cartilages. Here is something fascinating. The right bronchi is shorter, more vertical, and wider, which means inhaled objects, like food particles are more likely to get stuck here. On the other hand, the left bronchi are longer, narrower, and more horizontal. These bronchi enter each lung and branch out, again and again. Like branches of a tree. It is called bronchiole. There are over 30,000 bronchioles in each lungs. Now we have entered the bronchioles, the smallest airways in your lungs. While bronchi are lined with cartilage, bronchioles don't have any cartilage lining. So this bronchioles are more flexible and vulnerable. Each bronchiole is lined with smooth muscle that controls airflow by tightening or relaxing, like dimmer switches for your breath. Your lungs have a built-in janitorial team. 
Inner part of the bronchiole contains tiny hair-like structures, called cilia. These cilia constantly sweeping out dust and invaders coming inside with air. And now, at the end of each bronchiole is the final destination of every breath, tiny air sacs like structure, this is called alveoli. Your lungs hold over 600 million alveoli. These tiny air sacs are only about 0.2 millimeters wide, but their combined surface area equals the size of a tennis court. This is where the magic happens. The exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Each alveoli is engaged in transferring oxygen into our blood, and removing waste gases like carbon dioxide from our blood. Wall of alveoli is ultra thin. It have the thickness of only one cell. Oxygen crosses the ultra thin wall into our blood. At the same time, carbon dioxide filtered out from the blood through this wall, and ready to be exhaled. Red blood cells in the blood carries carbon dioxide from the cells of our body. When it reaches to the alveoli, blood enters into the capillaries, their carbon dioxide released from the red blood cells, and creates space for fresh oxygen. Oxygen from alveoli enters into the capillary through thin walls of alveoli, and red blood cells carries this oxygen molecules, and distributed between cells of various organs in our body. It's a high-speed, life-saving trade, happening millions of times per minute in alveoli. Once the job is done, carbon dioxide rides the airway back, through bronchioles it will reach bronchi, after that trachea, and at the out of our body through nose or mouth. Have you ever wondered, how your lungs help you breathe, every second of your life? They are not just two simple air sacs, they are highly complex structures, with different sections called lobes. But what do these lobes do? Let's take a deep journey. Your lungs are spongy, air-filled organs inside your chest. You have two lungs, but did you know they are not the same size? Your right lung is bigger, because your heart sits slightly to the left, making your left lung smaller. But the difference doesn't stop there. Let's explore their lobes. Your right lung has three lobe, the upper lobe, middle lobe, and lower lobe. Think of them as different compartments, each helping to process oxygen efficiently. Now, your left lung has only two lobes, the upper lobe and the lower lobe. Why? Because your heart needs extra space. Even though it has fewer lobes, your left lung works just as hard to bring oxygen into your body. So why do we have lobes? Think of them as different sections of a sponge. Your lungs are surrounded by a protective lining called the pleura, thin, slippery membrane that helps them move smoothly inside your chest while you breathe. Every breath you take. Every move you make. There's a powerful, hidden muscle at work. It doesn't look like a bicep, but it might be the most important muscle in your body. Curious? Let's meet your diaphragm, the unsung hero of breathing. Here it is, the diaphragm, a thin, dome-shaped muscle, that separates your chest cavity from your abdominal cavity. But don't let its shape fool you, this muscle is built for power.
The diaphragm is located at the inferior most aspect of the rib cage. The diaphragm acts as the floor of the thoracic cavity and the roof of the abdominal cavity. The attachments of diaphragm can be divided into peripheral and central attachments. The diaphragm has three main parts, based on where it attaches. It has three peripheral attachments. In front, diaphragm attached to the sternum. It is called the sternal part. On the sides, diaphragm attached to the lower ribs. It is called the costal part. In the back, diaphragm attached to the spine via strong ligaments, called crura. It is called the lumbar part. The muscle fibers of the diaphragm combine to form a central tendon. All these muscle fibers converge at the central tendon. Central tendon is like a flexible anchor point for the whole system. Central tendon is a non-muscular center that moves up and down as you breathe. Central tendon ascends to fuse with the inferior surface of the fibrous pericardium. On either side of the pericardium, the diaphragm ascends to form left domes and right domes. The right dome of the diaphragm lies slightly higher than the left dome. This is due to the presence of the liver. But here's something amazing, the diaphragm has three key openings, to let some vital structures pass through. First one is caval hiatus, the caval hiatus opening is for the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava, IVC, is the largest vein in the human body. It is the major blood vessel that carries, deoxygenated blood from the lower and middle body like, legs, abdomen, and pelvis, back to the heart. Second one is the aortic hiatus. It's located at the level of the 10th thoracic vertebra, T10. Aortic hiatus opening is for the aorta. Aorta is the major artery carrying blood from the heart to the body. Third one is esophageal hiatus. Esophageal hiatus is an opening in the diaphragm, through which the esophagus and vagus nerves pass into the abdominal cavity. These are like carefully engineered tunnels, through a living ceiling. Now, let's see the diaphragm in action. When you inhale, the diaphragm contracts and flattens, pulling downward. This expands your chest cavity and creates a vacuum that helps in pulling air into your lungs. When you exhale, the diaphragm relaxes and domes upward, squeezing the air back out. You are breathing about 20,000 times every day. Breathing is not the diaphragm's only job. It also helps with sneezing coughing, laughing, vomiting, crying, and pooping. That is right, by increasing pressure in the abdomen, the diaphragm helps you push things out when needed. When the diaphragm doesn't function properly, breathing becomes difficult. And those annoying hiccups? They're caused by involuntary diaphragm spasms. <laughs>